Hey guys, it's Greg Alexander again with Alexander the Greg Fishing. And today I wanted to bring you a video and I'm going to name it all about jigs. Now we're talking about bass jigs. We're not talking about uh, crappy jigs or baited jigs and things like that. So the jigs we're talking about today would be your typical lead headed hooks with a skirt and some type of trailer. Now, if you're like me and like I was when I was younger, you would go into the store and you'd go into the jig section and you'd go, wow, that's a pretty jig. I'm going to try that. And you would pick it up and walk out the store, put something on the back of it and go fishing with it. But you may have got frustrated because either you were losing fish or getting hung up or it just wasn't performing the way that you thought it should have performed. So we're going to go through the intricacies of a jig today to help you select the right jig or basically the right tool for the right job. Like a hammer is meant for a nail, screwdriver is not meant for a nail. So same thing with a jig, you need to have the right jig for the right job. So first let's discuss jig weights. And I'm just gonna categorize these in three different categories, heavy, medium, and light. A heavy jig would be a jig I would consider to be about three quarters of an ounce on up. You would use heavy jigs for two purposes, penetration of heavy cover or deep fishing. Now penetration of heavy cover, this particular jig head right here is an ounce and a quarter. Put whatever skirt or whatnot on the back of it. That one's particularly made for flipping grass, thick grass with a jig. Uh, and then you have, there's a three quarter ounce football style jig, which would be used for fishing uh, deeper also. So weight is for fishing deep or penetrating heavy cover that you can't get through with a lighter jig. Medium sized jigs, which will probably be the most common weight jigs i would say half ounce would be your standard medium sized jig maybe a little bit heavier maybe a little bit lighter 7 16 5 8 that type of thing uh, these are probably the most commonly thrown style of jig and uh, type of weight um, here's one here which is a half ounce head a little more weight easier to cast, skips a little bit better, uh, covers more depth ranges from shallow to relatively deep. So that would be a good size, a good rounded size to fish with like a half ounce medium size jig. And then you have your light jigs, like this little light. This is a, this is a three eighths ounce jig, but you can go all the way down to one eighth ounce jigs. And why would you throw a light jig? Well, that's when you're trying to tantalize the fish because they won't react to a heavier jig, falls too fast or not in the mood. And you, like a Senko, like a weight to Senko, it tantalizes by my jig the same way. A light jig is to tantalize the, the fish. And generally with a lighter jig, either in really muddy water because it gets in front of them longer and it, they don't see things as well or in very clear water. So that's the basically three different grades of jigs by weight. Now we got to talk about the head design. Uh, and when I talk about the head design, I'm also going to include line tie position on the head. So the first jig that you hear a lot about is the football head jig. It's an oblong shaped like a football. And with this particular jig, the line tie is almost on top, not quite, a little bit angled. A football jig you would use for rocks, drops, and sandbars, drop offs and sandbars, generally deeper. Uh, the football jig comes through rocks better and it has a better wiggle coming across sandbars or shell beds or drop offs and things like that. The next jig style that you would 
have to understand would be the old faithful Arky style jig. The line tie is not on the front, not on the top. It's about a 45 degree and a lot of the Arky heads have a rolled head. So when they, when you pull them, when you pull them, they do like this and then it throws the trailer up, obviously. That's uh, probably the most tried and true tested catches fish in all situations and circumstances type, type of head. I would generally throw an Arky jig around docks or lighter cover. Then you have your 90 degree jig head. And that would be used for more vertical fishing. Uh, vertical fishing. You're jigging something down uh, instead of casting it out necessarily. Or if you are casting out, you might be stroking it, pulling it up, letting it fall, pulling it up real high and letting it fall. And then you have finally the nose tie jig where the line tie is right on the very tip of the nose it's not on the top it's not way around top it's not 40 it's more right towards the tip of the nose and you would use this type of jig for brush heavy cover grass or swimming a bait where you just wanted it to go kind of straight that would be they're, they're basically the four types of jigs and the four type of line ties and i would do want to add one more type of jig which is not really a jig at all but this is a this is a punch skirt. It's a skirt on a bullet head, and that would be used kind of like a jig with whatever type of trailer when you're trying to punch through heavy cover uh, because you can't get a jig through it because of the, the weed guard and whatnot. Uh, now let's talk about skirting. Basically, two types of skirt. Well, there's more than two types of skirting, but there's two major types of skirting. Uh, the first would be silicone and here's a silicone skirt see it just kind of hangs floppy uh, good thing about silicone it comes in every color under the sun so if you like to mix and match color silicone is going to be your best deal the next type of skirting material would be living rubber now living rubber if you can see this on this football jig it tends to flare out it tends to flare out more to the sides it has a little bit more body to it has a little bit more life to it uh, probably a better material to make the jig look more lively than the silicone and then you have hair jigs or feather jigs used around bait and shad and then you have things you add to your skirt like tinsel, mylar, things like that when you need to add flash to your jig for appeal. Now understand with jig colors, dark days, dirty water, muddy water, black, black blue, black red, black gold flake, they're, they're the jigs you want to throw. Uh, Clear days, cleaner water, you want to stick with more of your neutral colors, your green pumpkins, your green pumpkin with a little bit of orange or some gold flake, uh, pumpkin seed, those, those types of lighter colors for clear days. So dark days, dark colors, light days, light colors. Generally, remember, like I've said before, nothing is set in stone, but these are general rules that play most of the time. And then of course you have your white jigs for when you're fishing around bait, shad, bullhead minnows, things like that, that are pretty much lightest whitish color of baits. Now understand we have jigs that have very few strands in them. And then you have jigs that have gobs of strands in them and the one with gobs of strands obviously is going to give the bait more bulk 
It's going to slow the bait down and it's going to appeal to a bigger fish. Uh, but a lot of times in clear water, you're not going to get away with that real, real, real bulky skirt. Not saying you can't, you will, but generally. So the more strands you have, the bigger the bulk, the more it appeals to better fish, the slower to fall, the more it entices to fish that aren't real active. Now we got to talk about the weed guard. Now you can have a weed guard with one single wire sticking off of it, obviously. And that would be for light cover, clear water situations where it's really important that the fish don't notice that weed guard sticking off of there or as a light bite. And you can't get away with that a lot of times in brush and grass and, and uh, uh, logs and things. The wire weed guard's not going to serve your purpose. It's going to be hung up a lot. So, but I, I think a lot of things, times that people don't understand about weed guards is all weed guards are not created equal. Some weed guards, the weed guard is very soft, soft. It moves really easy, right? Some of them move easier because there's less strands in them. This one has less strands in it. Well, why does this one have less strands in it? Well, this is a football jig. You're not coming across a lot of brush and grass and things like that. You're fishing more open cover. You don't need as many strands to keep the hook from getting caught as you do, obviously, with one that you're flipping into the brush. So that being said, a brush jig would have a lot more strands in it than one that's not in the brush, or it would have a stiffer action to it, harder to push down. So, and what I like to do with my jigs is, let me get one here that I've done it to. I like to cut the weed guard. I like to cut the weed guard so that it's just past the barb of the hook. That's how I like to do it. Just past the barb of the hook. You don't want it sticking way back here and you don't want it in front of the hook or you're going to be hanging up. So you clip those weed guards and something else you can do. If you're having a hard time, maybe you're losing a couple fish because your weed guard's so hard. You can keep the same number of strands on there, but you can take that weed guard and you can let it spread it out some, right? You spread it out. You just bend it over to the you bend it over to the sides like that. And that allows that that allows that hook to penetrate that weed guard better than if it's all balled up right on top of the hook. All right, so let's talk about uh trailers. Now with jig trailers, don't get stuck. Anything goes with jig trailers. I mean you hear guys winning tournaments putting full-size brush hogs on the back of a jig. And other guys winning tournaments with a finesse worm on the back of a jig. So anything that you can thread onto that hook is worth a try for you. You know, and some things will work for you and some things won't, but you got to try. But in general, let's talk about twin tail grub, probably the most popular jig trailer. And maybe like rage crawls. They got a lot of action. They appeal to active fish, hungry fish, fish that are feeding. You can catch others on too, but that's how they appeal they appeal to mostly. Then you have your your chunk style baits, like this regular chunk style, and then the super chunk style baits which are tend to be bulkier, slow the fall down a little bit more. They appeal to fish that are maybe not quite as active as the ones that were feeding on the rage tails and the twin tail uh, grubs on the back. And also they, 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 they tend to be a little bit bulkier and tend to maybe appeal to a little bigger fish sometimes with the chunk baits on there. And then when you get to uh, fish that are finicky, the water's clear, uh, you can't get them to react to the jig with those other things on there. Then you can put like real simple. That's a simple little tiny miniature crawfish. Doesn't have any 
any much action to it at all. Or you can take a piece of straight worm, straight finesse worm or piece of Senko or pretty much any type of straight worm straight worm and put a straight worm on the back of your jig and that that appeals to fish that are feeding on smaller bait or they're less active where they may have just turned their nose up to something that was bigger or had more action to it at the time so don't get stuck throwing the same thing all the time try different trailers different weights different colors different uh, uh weed guards depending on what you're in how many what's your skirt count like all those things are important and all those things have a place, uh, uh, a place and a time. Uh, and lastly, just like with every bait that you throw bass fishing, you have to understand the forage. If you're throwing a black and blue jig and the fish are feeding, feeding on light brown and yellow bluegill, then you may get a bite or two, but you're gonna get more bites if you match the hatch. So you gotta consider what's the, the size and the color of the crawfish where I'm fishing. What's the size and the color of the bluegills that are under these docks that I'm skipping to? What time of year is it and how big are the shad if I'm swimming a white jig or white chartreuse jig? Are there yellow perch in the food chain, which will be gold and green with a little red? Are there bull minnows in the food chain, which are smaller and green pumpkin and white, basically? Is there crappie, are the crappie up around where the bass are, or is it a different time of year, which, you know, you got white with some uh, halo colors and black spots, and all these types of things. If you match the hatch, you'll do better with a jig, just like you will with everything else. So that's a basic understanding of jigs, the weights, how they play, the weed guards, how they play, the skirting, how that plays, uh, the type of weed guards, the trailers, and the forage. And I hope that this video helps you to catch more fish. Again, if you like my content, please hit the like button. If you want to follow me on a regular basis, I'll be bringing you videos of all sorts on fishing, bass fishing, tournaments, uh, times of year, seasonal patterns, different types of baits, uh, best trending lures, all these types of things will be coming up in the future. Uh, I'm going to try to do at least one video a week, maybe two, depending on my schedule. I will be fishing the Bass Northern Opens this year, and I'm planning on doing a, a tournament reports on those also. So if you want to subscribe to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I think there's a little bell too that you click. If you click that bell, You'll get alerts on your phone or whatnot that my a new video has come up and you can watch those. So I appreciate that you're watching. Uh, again, I hope that it helps you catch more fish and have a blessed day.